Hello fellow book nerds! This is Gabby and today I'm going to be doing the bingo challenge. So the reason we're in this new location <laughs> is because I want to do the bingo challenge first created by Jesse the Reader and I'll link his video down below although if you're watching me you probably know who he is. Today's challenge requires a little bit of um, going through my shelves, therefore I changed my location. I'm not a biggest fan, but I just got new bookshelves and they look nice, I think. So we're just gonna go with it. If something's out of order, can I ignore it? Because I'm still trying to figure out where everything goes. I've got a little book trope bingo chart here. I'll put it here so you can see better. Um, oh, Well, hello back. That haphazard ending was me not putting the coordinates into little balls and putting them in a cup so I couldn't actually play. So who says I don't prepare for my videos? Now I've got this beautiful mug with all of them coordinates and I'll pick one out. Then I will uh, choose the corresponding coordinates with what this says and these are different tropes. Uh, YA or just book tropes and we'll slowly go through with these and see if I can get a bingo So let's start off with the free space because apparently that's a thing I've never played actual bingo. I only played like bingo where you drink and Basically for adults is very fun. I would, I would recommend it. There you go So the first coordinate was N5 Bingo! Unlikely friendship. Okay, let's see. For unlikely friendship, I've chosen Sorcery of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. So, this book follows the story of Elizabeth, who is a librarian in this magical world where books can be can carry magic. They are sentient and they can become grimoires, which is kind of like demoness creatures. And here she becomes friends with Nathaniel, who's a sorcerer, and Silas, who's a demon, who's a demon ser server of Nathaniel. And I feel like this is a very unlikely friendship because first of all Elizabeth is taught to hate all sorcerers and they're pure evil and she becomes friends with sorcerer Silas is a demon and his power is drawn upon the people he serves so him becoming friends with his master is very weird so I, and this book is really amazing I would really highly recommend it but I think that's a very unlikely friendship Let's give myself a point. okay Oh, three, and that is oh, three book loving character. Damn it! That would have been perfect for Elizabeth. Then, and you know what? Let's just get all the cliches out of the way and then we can be done with that. Hermione Granger from Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. When I think a book lover, person who truly appreciates knowledge and will go and just live in the library, I'm thinking Hermione. Any argues? No. Is it basic? Yeah. I'm basic, so... The production value on this video is kind of insane, I'm just saying. Okay, let's get another one. N1. Time travel. Ooh, okay. Time travel. Oh no, fuck. Oh, I'm ready. Honestly, I don't even know if I have any books of time travel. I really don't think so. And I already colored it because I'm an idiot. Oh. You know, a lot of these I didn't read, so even if they have time travel, I wouldn't know. I give up. I have no time travel and I've already colored it, so I am an idiot. Is anyone surprised? O2. You can't see, but it's O2. Magic school? What? I, well, no. Don't color it before I find it. I'm trying not to choose like the most basic answer I can go for, but honestly, I don't even have that many books, so it's kind of hard. Okay, you know what? Let's not, let's make it so that I don't have to own the book, I just have to think of one. Okay, there's just one I can think of. Um, School of Good and Evil. I'll give it to myself. This video is a train wreck. Yes, it is. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, B1. B1. And that is the golden tree. <laughs> Why are all of these Harry Potter? Yes, I know, I know, everyone thinks this edition is ugly. Whatever, I like it. 
this one when I saw it and then I just committed, okay? So, whatever. And why am I saying the golden tree? Why am I saying the golden tree? Well, well, well. I think there's no more iconic trio except for Harry Potter, Ron and Hermione. Then Katniss, Peter and Gail. Do we hate Gail? Yes, yes we do hate Gail, but and are they not friends at all, but kind of hate each other and she is just so indecisive, I don't even think she likes either of them? Well, yeah, but are they iconic? Yeah, they're iconic, so they're golden to me. And also, I used Harry Potter already, so all my other options are gone. <sighs> Oh one pound family. Okay, okay, I can work with that one. I can work with found family. Oh. For this I've chosen a Shatter Me by the Haramafi. So when we start off, Juliet has absolutely no family. She's all alone in a mental institution because her touch can kill ya. So she's just out there living the saddest life possible. But Along the way, she makes beautiful friends, she makes beautiful found family. I'm not gonna tell you who it is, because it's spoilers, yeah. But she makes not only the most beautiful love interest, but also beautiful friends. Um, um, Kenji. So, but Kenji alone, I'd say this is the most beautiful found family I've ever seen. Kenji, I mean, Kenji. 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 I really like filming standing up. I feel like I can be more expressive. Is it just me? And two. Oh yeah, there you go. Absent parents. Oh, <laughs> every YA ever. You know what? I'm gonna go a bit maybe unconventional, but Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. So I just finished reading this. So Nick, the main guy character, he his mom is dead and his dad is has Alzheimer's, but I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about the main character Amy. So her parents are very much alive and they are very loving. They're in a very loving relationship. But when she was young, they kind of capitalized on her childhood and created a character of Amazing Amy, which was the children's storybook based on the actual Amy on the actual child. And I think they were so absent because she says in the book that when she gave up cello, the amazing Amy became a prodigy. When she didn't want to do volleyball, the amazing Amy went to varsity. All her life she's been compared to this manufactured character by her parents and her parents have no idea who the actual Amy is because they don't care. They just want to make their money and they say they love her but actually do they because they're not there for her, they don't know who she is, they have absolutely no clue. In their minds, she's the amazing Amy that they wrote about, that they could tailor however they want and make money off, so. Do you like those rows count for, for Dingo? Or is it like this? Be free, secretly royal. Oh my god, I know a perfect book for this. I don't own it and it's really a spoiler. You know what, I don't own it, but I have a perfect book. I'm not gonna talk about it, I'm just gonna show it. And if you read it, you know it. If not, I'm not telling you who it is. It's totally not the most obvious choice ever and totally no one saw it coming, okay? Throne of Glass by Sarah Jane Mass. There you go, I said it. Oh five. Broken Family, Three Dark Crowns by Kendra Blake. This world is a matriarchy and every queen <laughs> gives birth to triplets and those triplets each belong to a different cast of magic. So they have like elemental magic. I don't actually remember the other ones. Naturalist, Poisoner and Elemental Magics. So these triplets are separated very early in their age and they're like raised separately and at the end they have to kill each other to see who gets the throne. If that's not a broken family, I don't know what it is. Like they literally fight to death. So... G3. Friends to lovers. Oh my god. I don't know if this is like the perfect example of friends to lovers, but I can't think of anything else. So let's go with Again But Better by Kristin Riccio. Yeah, it's a romance novel. So this... <laughs> oh. This follows Shane who is going, who feels like she needs to do over her life and she goes on exchange to England. Shenigans and Sue, it has some magical realism in it, but the main romance I'd argue they started as friends and then it kind of went from there. I'm kind of close to two. 
So maybe this will be the last one. Before, hate to love. Oh my God, every book ever. So I only have the third book, but I, I'm kind of, my meaning is kind of God's Grave. God's Grave by J. Crystal. The quirk, two characters there, BBC hated each other, became a very passionate lovers. And this book follows Mia, who goes to assassin school to avenge her family. And this is the third book. I won. Uh, the chosen one. I feel like the chosen one trope is like big, but and popular but at the same time authors in like last couple of years haven't been trying so like they've been got stepping away from being called the chosen one from the characters to be called chosen one because it's got a rep, negative rep like this character was just chosen because they're the best amazing blah, blah blah so i feel like they've kind of stepped away from that and now it's not really advertised as the chosen one you're just like a person with a lot of skill let's go with the bone season by Samantha Shan. So I don't actually know if this even counts because I am 200 pages in and I absolutely love it. It's amazing. But at the same time, I don't really know where the story is going. I know nothing. So in this world, there are cl clairvoyants uh, who can kind of interact with the ether, which is like that's another plane. So basically, can, some of them can talk to ghosts, some of them can go into other people's dreamscapes and stuff like that. And they're oppressed in their world and are, there are different types of clairvoyance. So some of them are way less powerful, some of them are way more powerful. And in this character, uh, in this book, uh, my character definitely goes to the one of the most powerful category. At least I think so. I'm not 100% sure yet. I mean, she is in the highest category and it's said pretty early on that she is in the highest category. So I, this is a kind of dystopian, so I can see her go on to free the world from the oppression. So I'd say she's kind of the chosen one, but she's chosen because she also has some wit and grit and she can do it, but also she has really powerful abilities, so. B5. I have powers. These are so good. Jesse's so, he's so good. He just makes these all so amazing. And you're just like, wow. Let's go with Ace of Shades. It's by Amanda Foody. So this follows Anne, whose mother disappeared, and she's trying to find her. So she goes to City of Sin, the New Reigns, which kind of reminds me of New Orleans. And I know there's different kinds of magic, but I honestly don't remember much. I really want to reread it because it's one of my favorite books of all time. But I can't remember anything. And the sequel, King of Fools, is out. And the third book is coming out. And honestly, I like can't remember anything. So I'm definitely reading it very soon. I don't remember if the f character I'm thinking of has no characters, so no powers to begin with, but I know they're finding out they are way more powerful than they knew. So it's kind of, oh, do I have powers? Oh my God, they're amazing. Kind of feel. Okay. I four. I'm not like other girls. You know what? Zenith by Sasha Osberg and Lindsay Cummings. Okay, maybe this isn't fair because it is about a whole set of female characters who are space pirates and they go on and they go on missions blah blah i feel like the main character is just a, such a special snowflake and i know she doesn't mean to be and i did like i really like the first book i didn't like the second book as much but andy i just she gives up that feeling like she's superior even though she is friends with a lot of women who are also pretty cool but it's like oh my group of friends are amazing the rest of the girls mm, like, there's no girl and girl hate. It's just the vibe, okay? So, I don't know. Maybe maybe this doesn't count. But it's just the vibe I'm getting, you know? G4. Parent keeping secret. Let's go with Gumiho by Kat Cho. This book is based in Korean mythology and it follows a girl who's a Gumiho, which is a nine-tailed fox. And she needs to kind of consume energy or lives of men to survive. So, in this character, her mom is also a Gumiho and she's definitely keeping a lot of secrets. So, <laughs> very coming forward and she kind of manipulates the information to her advantage, so... G2, sibling rivalry, and for this I'm um, choosing Cersei by Madeline Merler. So Cersei is the daughter of uh, god Helios. She has a lot of siblings and there's definitely some sibling rivalry. And then, <laughs> river <laughs> there's definitely some sibling tension and they really don't like each other. And they bring each other down, it's definitely not a loving relationship. And because their mom is, she's kind of not a great person, she definitely put them up against Cersei because Cersei's a bit different and she's more 
focused on other things and she's more of a grand like she likes mortals and stuff so definitely definitely some sibling rivalry in there oh for star crossed lovers see i'm never really sure what that means does that mean they're like everything's going against them or they're just not meant to be for this i'm gonna choose something i'm pretty sure is star crossed lovers, lovers and that is the wrath and the dawn so this book follows a story of a kingdom whose king it's a retelling of 1001 night arabian nights and it's a this kingdom where the king it kills his bride each night and he gets a new bride each night. So our main character, her sister, was one of the victims and she wants to get revenge. Honestly, it's so good. Like, the sec the sequel, I didn't like. The Rose and the Dagger I didn't like as much. But the book is amazing. The angst. The angst. Like, it's just amazing. It's so good. <sighs> I reread it recently and didn't love as much as the first time because I don't think that would have been possible. But it was still so amazing and I loved it. <gasps> I got a bingo! Bingo! Yes, this is a bingo you're seeing. Bingo! I'm kind of sad I didn't get to do all of them, but some of them I wouldn't even know to choose. So maybe let's just be happy I got a bingo after five years. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. It was so much fun to do. I feel like there were so many things that just kept going. I kept messing up and I really hope when I see the footage it's not just a mess that I can't even use. So let's hope. But I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. If you played the bingo, let me know. If you haven't, I'll tag some people in the comments. Why not? And no, in the comments, in the description box. So look out. Please like, subscribe. It really helps me out. But if you don't want to, that's cool too. Let me know. What 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 would you choose for these problems? Did I do all right? I'm really bad with this. Like, I can't think on the spot. That's one thing about me. I just can't. I can't do it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for watching again. I'll see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>